Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. The Herschel Walker story keeps getting worse for Herschel Walker. Earlier this week, of course, the Daily Beast first reported that Walker, the Trump endorsed Republican nominee for Georgia Senate seat, had paid for a woman's abortion in 2009. And the report contained lots of contemporaneous evidence that has not been reviewed by us here at NBC News. But it included the literal receipt for the procedure, the check Walker sent the woman, and even the get well card Walker apparently mailed her, complete with what sure looks like his signature. Now, as we've said, NBC News has not independently verified this story. This is a Daily Beast story. Walker vehemently denied the allegations when they first broke. He said he had no idea who the woman making the allegation could be. That seems a little difficult to believe, though, because according to a new report in the Daily Beast, the woman who says Walker paid for her abortion is also the mother of one of his children. Again, NBC News has also not verified this most recent report. In a statement, Walker said there was no truth to it or any other Daily Beast report. Now, to be clear, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a woman choosing to terminate a pregnancy, nor is there anything wrong with that person's partner offering to pay for the procedure. The problem comes when the partner in question, Herschel Walker, is running on one of the most extreme anti-abortion platforms in the country months after the Supreme Court got rid of Roe. Walker said he supports a national abortion ban without any exceptions, including for rape and incest. He has compared abortion to murder. And it is that crushing hypocrisy with real-world consequences that inspired the mother of one of his children to come forward with this allegation. She told the Daily Beast, quote, he seemed pretty pro-choice to me. He was pro-choice, obviously. Going on to say, quote, he didn't accept responsibility for the kid we did have together, and now he isn't accepting responsibility for the one we didn't have. That says so much about how he views the role of women in childbirth versus his own. And now he wants to take that choice away from other women and couples entirely. Now, when this story initially broke, Walker put out a statement almost right away calling the story a defamatory lie, promising an imminent lawsuit against the Daily Beast for its reporting. Walker said the lawsuit would be filed tomorrow morning, meaning first thing Tuesday. Now Thursday night, so no sign of any legal action. And by this morning, Walker's tone had changed. His argument, if I'm tracking, and I'll admit it's a little hard to, is something along the lines of, I didn't do it, and if I did do it, would that really be so bad? Is there anything you need to be forgiven for vis-a-vis -a, -vis a woman whose name we do not know? Do you know who this woman is, and do you need to be forgiven? <laughs> well, that's, that's what's so funny, and I'm saying I've been forgiven because of all the things I did when I went to my, when I, the, the thing with my ex-wife and all that, and things I did I don't know how many years ago that I wrote in my book. I said, guys, I wasn't perfect. I had my problem with mental health, and I've uh, I've, uh, I've I've been I've, I've, I've been I've, I hate I've been born again, but I, I have a new life, and I've, I've been moving forward. And and, uh, and and if that had happened, I would I would have said it because there's nothing to be ashamed of there. You know, people have done that, but I know nothing about it. And uh, if I knew about it, I, I would be honest and talk about it. But I know nothing about that. Uh, Hugh was nodding his head there, uh, tracking better than I was because I'm having a little <laughs> difficulty following. Uh, but Walker goes on an extended aside about past allegations of violent, threatening behavior towards his ex-wife, a different woman than the one in question, before finally saying, quote, if that had happened, I would have said there's nothing to be shamed of there. It's something people do. That presumably meaning paid for an abortion. And again, as I keep saying, he's right. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Other than the fact that Walker wants to make abortion illegal across the country, wants to control whether women can get that procedure, control their bodies entirely. He did a press event today, and you may be shocked to hear it didn't go that well. Walker seemed to walk back his earlier statement made this morning and again denied everything, despite all the evidence to the contrary. You said that if this did happen, there's nothing to be ashamed of. How do you Wait, say I never that? Said, I you never said that said this it. morning on, on you. No, what show. I said, I was yeah. talking about something totally different than if this did happen. I said, when I with my ex wife in my past, nothing to do with what this woman said. So I said, this, this here, the abortion thing is false, it's a lie. 
And that's what I said. I said, anything happened with my ex-wife or what Christian was talking about, I don't know. But as I said, if anything happened, there's nothing to be ashamed of. My ex-wife and I have been the best of friends with her husband and my wife. So that's the thing that I've said. And I said nothing about if it did happen because I said that's a lie. Okay, we're not going to go sentence by sentence here. You can decide for yourself if you think Herschel Walker is telling the truth. It is undeniable he has had a real credibility problem and a track record for lying. He lied about his experience working with law enforcement and his supposed work supervising hospitals and about charitable donations his food company claimed to be making that never seemed to materialize. He even lied about the number of kids he has. And when the Daily Beast, in fact, the same reporter of these latest stories called him on that, Walker had to admit their reporting was accurate even as he now tries to claim every story the outlet has written about him is untrue. So, again, you can make up your own mind about who you believe here, but I'll just say I don't think it would be unreasonable if you concluded Herschel Walker is not telling the truth. But this pivot to Walker's family history, the idea of forgiveness, has been something of a recurring theme for the candidate since the allegations broke. He's conflating the abortion story with allegations from his ex-wife and now his son that he behaved in a violent and threatening manner, including one incident when he held a gun to his ex-wife's head and threatened to blow her brains out. An allegation, it bears mentioning, Walker does not deny. Walker says he has been forgiven, he's been saved, reborn since the struggle with mental illness that he claimed caused those violent incidences. And when he was asked about abortion, he pivots again to the religious rhetoric of personal growth without addressing the merits of the allegation, which he sort of denies. The strategy is not working all that well. <laughs> I mean, even some Georgia Republicans, like the state's sitting Republican lieutenant governor, are clearly getting a little nervous. Even the most staunch Republicans, I think, are rattled at the continued flow of information. Uh, I think every Republican knew that there was baggage out there, and, uh, but the weight of that baggage is starting to, to feel a little closer to unbearable at this point. Some of the stuff could have gotten cleaned up in the primary if we would have given an honest look in, in an honest primary. <laughs> that would have looked uh, hard at somebody's leadership skills. If we're being intellectually honest, Herschel Walker uh, won the primary because he scored a bunch of touchdowns back in the 80s, and he was Donald Trump's friend. And now we've moved forward several months on the calendar, and that's no longer a recipe to win. Now, whew, ouch. That man is not running for re-election, doesn't have to share a ballot with Walker, which may be why he's willing to speak so candidly. But behind the scenes, he is definitely not the only one thinking that way, I can tell you. Here's just one example. One anonymous Republican strategist also laid the blame for Walker on the ex-president. Quote, since President Trump hasn't spent a penny thus far to help his slate of flawed endorsed candidates, he could have at least spent a few bucks to vet them first. Would have saved Trump from the embarrassment of what's shaping up to be a very bad election night for his candidates. It's true, Donald Trump is personally responsible for many of the terrible candidates Republicans are running in otherwise winnable races this cycle. But it's too late to do anything about it now. Elections in 33 days. What are you going to do?